Hey everyone, let's get started. We're going to talk about storyboardthat.com today. It is a great way to digitize stories. And for those of you that are not artistic in any way, exactly like me, then this is a great way for you to create something that is visually appealing and creative in its own respect. So here we go. So we're going to go up here and type in storyboardthat.com. And now we're going to go to scroll down a little bit and we're going to go to create a storyboard. Now, if you have a subscription to storyboardthat.com, you're going to be able to do a lot more things than I am right now because I don't have it for a subscription. But I'm going to show you what you can do. So you can go to create a storyboard and it also has um, a free subscription a trial for about 14 days, I think, and I've already gone past that, so I'm gonna close this out. And this is your storyboard right here. You, have, you start off with three cells, and you can make this a little bit bigger or smaller by just zooming in and out with a slider here. Now, mine is about maxed out, so I'm gonna put it right there. Now, down here, you have a layout, and you can move cells around and copy cells and so forth. But if you go to the layout, one of the things that you may want to change is right here, there's a cell layout title. And that will give you a title up here. And you can also do a description, which will give you a place to describe your story uh, below. So I'm going to turn those off for me right now because I don't want those. But that may be something that you want. And you can change this to be like a more cinematic 16 by 9 uh, storyboard or just the traditional 4x3, which fits pretty well inside a slide deck. So we're just going to go with the traditional here. And if you have the paid subscription or the trial, you have some other things that you can try over here as well. So I'm just going to press on Let's Go. And I'm going to look through the scenes here that we have. And that's where we're going to start off. We want some kind of background here to fill in our cells. So we can look at a town. These are all different tabs you can look at. There's entertainment, there's homes. You can even do a school. Um, I think that'll be very popular with some of your kiddos and maybe with you if you're showing an example. I've already selected some that I want to do. So I'm gonna go over here to more and I'm gonna choose mythical and futuristic. So I'm gonna take this little slide here and I'm going to find the ones that I want to use today. So here's one right here that I want to use. And I'm going to also use this one right here, which is like a haunted house looking home right there. So once you have your backgrounds chosen, your scenes, then you can go ahead and start putting in some characters and so forth. Now, by the way, anything that you have, you can change it to look a little bit different by going to edit scene or you can use filters. And I can make this a little bit more spooky uh, by making it more nighttime if I want. Like it's a little dark for me. Um, I can put rain in there. I can put snow. Any of those features that you want. You can put no moon or a moon, whichever one you want. But I'm just going to leave it at daytime and clear the skies and use this feature right here just like it was before. And I can change how the sky looks. I can make it look a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. Um, I might make it just a little bit darker to make it a little bit more spooky. So I'll change it to that really dark blue there and update my scene. All right, so I'm going to add some characters here. So I'm going to go over to characters now. And there are so many different characters that you could choose from. Um, I really love the monsters and myths, and we'll use some of those in just a moment. Um, but I'm going to go over here to jobs. And what I'm thinking of is developing like a Halloween scene where we have two kids that are trick-or-treating and then they go to a haunted house and they actually see real monsters, but they just don't know it. So I'm going to go over here and choose a doctor and I'll put them in here. And there's also a clown up here. I'm going to scroll over and find the clown. So there's the clown. I'm going to drag him down here too. Now, you can get like a 3D visual effect by having, you know, the clown be a little bit further in the back and then have the doctor be a little bit closer up to the front. So they're going to be a little bit bigger, appear a little bit bigger in my, uh, my story here. 
So I'm going to click on her and I'm going to change her hair color. And I'm going to change her eye color as well. And her skin color. Let's see. We'll give her black eyes is fine. Um, I'm going to keep the coat as white. You can change the shirt color. So we can change that to maybe a blue and then shoes and so forth. Now, so she's all good. Now I'm going to go over here to the clown. I'm going to change his hair color to make it a little bit orange. And I'm going to change his skin color just a little bit. And I'm going to change his shoe color. So now I want to choose it to brown, and I don't see brown here. So I can click the little drop down here. And I can go over here to move it just a little bit so it's more brown. And I can see that color right there. And then click on choose. And now his shoes are brown. Okay, now another thing that you want to do with your characters is you probably want to pose them. So I'm going to click on the clown first, and I'll go to Edit Pose. Now I'm going to have him be walking through the forest here. So I'm going to slightly turn him to the right, and I'm going to have him carry a bag of candy. Um, so we'll choose that in just a moment. But look down here, you have all these preset poses, like they're crying, they're upset, they're angry, they're determined, they're speaking, whatever it may be. I'm going to have my little clown start walking. So I'm going to click on walking here. And now his arms just aren't exactly where I want them to be. I want his one arm out to be holding a bag of candy. The other one can be to the side, I guess, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to go to update pose. And by the way, you can change any of those hair, skin color, eye color, shirts, all that stuff right here as well. Also, there's some expressions here. Um, I'm going to choose this expression right here because he's not really happy at the moment. And we'll give him a little bit of text to actually show what he's thinking. So I have the clown all figured out here. I want to go to the doctor. You may have to click off here to get some room to click on the doctor. So I'm going to go to edit pose. I'm going to turn her a little bit to the right as well. I'm going to make her walking. And I'm going to choose her arm so that she... Uh, is carrying a bag of candy. Okay, so that's good. And I'm gonna give her a little bit of an expression like that, like she's talking. I think that works pretty well. I can also tilt her head down a little bit. That's probably just a little bit too far. So I'm gonna go right there and leave that just like that. So now I'll go to update and move her over here, move the clown up. Okay, now I'm gonna find a bag of candy for them. And I have to click on the word more here to get the search box to come, up, to come up. Your screen may be a little bit bigger, so you probably won't have that problem. So I'm going to click inside here and type in bag. And I have some different bags to choose from. Um, none of those are what I'm necessarily looking for. So I might choose something else, maybe like pumpkin, because there might be that pumpkin container that you've seen at Halloween before. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to move the uh, clown a little bit back here, and give him a pumpkin to carry, and then resize that pumpkin so it makes sense as to what he's carrying there, about the same size. And I'm going to find a pillowcase if I can, and maybe the doctor is carrying a pillowcase. So I'll click on here, click inside here. Uh, type in pillowcase. May just pillow. We don't want to get too crazy. Yeah, so here's a pillowcase right here. And yeah, that sized up pretty well. Um, this is, I want to switch these two. So I'm going to drag this one over here and give the doctor the pumpkin. It just fits a little bit better with a color scheme here. So make this candy a big one like we used to have back in the the day when we collect all kinds of candy. All right, so I'm pretty much finished here. You know what? I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a black cat. All right. And perfect. There's one right there. I'm just going to put him up here. Make it a little bit more spooky. Because that's not good. They're crossing the path of a black cat. So I'll put that, that cat up there in the tree. All right. Kind of hard to see, but we'll go with it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add some textables, which are just 
shapes where you can have like a text bubble. And I'm going to give one to our friend, the uh, clown here. And our clown is going to say a few things. So I'm going to type in here, uh, that last house gave me peanut butter kisses, exclamation mark, gross. Now, if you're a big fan of peanut butter kisses, I apologize for that, but I just don't like them very much. So I'm going to move that bubble right above his head. Um, I'm going to give the doctor a bubble too. So I'm going to grab one of these and just drag and drop. This is so easy to use. You just drag and drop and resize and move things like you're used to doing with any kind of slide deck, whether it be PowerPoint or Google Slides, something like that, just easy to use. So the doctor is going to say nasty. Let's... Check out oops, this house up here, period. Look, those kids have some great costumes. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to move these things around because my bubble here is just a little bit uh, sideways here. And let's see if I can move some of these things back a little bit. I could probably change which bubble I used or chose, uh, but I just don't want to do that right now. So I'm just going to move this stuff around. Move the doctor back. She can take her pumpkin container with her. All right, and it's pretty much in the frame, so it's all good. So. Okay, now I'm going to add some characters in here, and um, I'm just going to skip through this so it's not too long of a video, but I want to show you one more thing. I'm going to go back to characters here. I'm going to choose monsters and myths, and I'm going to find uh, Frankenstein because I saw him earlier. Well, there's two of the characters I want. Oh, there's all three. So I'm going to put that one in there, put this one in here, and then put this one here, and there's some ghosts. That I'm going to put in here as well, and I'm going to resize those in just a moment. But I'm going to show you something with Frankenstein here. I want him to be kind of funny and like he's lost his head, kind of like you've seen in some of those Halloween movies and so forth. So one thing that I can do right here is I can click on him, and I can copy him. So I'm going to make a copy of him. So I'm going to click on this right here, make a copy, and I'm going to choose one of these to not have a head. So I'm going to go right here and click on this one, and I can choose crop right here. So I'm going to click on crop, and I'm going to resize this so that he doesn't have a head any longer. So I'll just move this down a little bit, and I'm going to say, let's go. And now he doesn't have a head. And then this one right here is just going to be a head. So we're going to crop this one, and I know that may sound a little sick in the minute, but we're just having fun with it. So I'm going to click on it and then click on crop. And then I'm going to scroll down so I can see the whole picture, but I'm going to move that up so I can crop his head. And then I'm going to click on let's go. Now I want that head to be kind of turned and not just kind of sitting on the ground. So I'm going to go to edit pose. And I'm going to slightly turn him. Notice I'm just kind of looking at the head here. And he's going to be looking down a little bit. And maybe expression of surprise because he's looking for his body. So maybe that. Maybe that looks kind of weird. Um, maybe this one right here. That, that's better, I guess. We don't want to like make it too scary. So go to update pose. And now I can turn that head just by choosing this right here to turn it a little bit. And then I can move it away from the body some. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of this going, and we're just going to do like a really quick um, time fly through here so you can see the rest of the stuff I'm doing. And then we'll go to the very end of this of what you need to do to copy and paste this into a slide deck. So here we go. Okay, so I'm all finished with this. I want to go ahead and preserve these two cells since I don't have an account for Storyboard That, which I do encourage you to go ahead and try that out. 
try out their free version. See if you want to get, you know, a subscription to it. It's a great program. So I'm going to preserve these by using my snipping tool. And what I've done is I went ahead and created a slide deck. So I'm going to go to the snipping tool first. And you can do this with the Chromebook as well. So I'm going to click on new and I'm just going to cut out the first cell. And I'm going to copy it and I can close it out. Then I'm going to go here to my storyboard uh, slide deck that I have. And this is a slide for each of the students. You can give them editing access so that they can type in their name and they can paste their storyboard. So I'm going to do a right click to paste. And here's mine. I'm going to resize it so that it fits into that first cell. All right, and there it is. I'm going to move it over just a tad. All right, perfect. That's good. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab my second cell and go to the snipping tool again. Click on new, click and drag, then release it so you have it all. Copy, so I'm going to click copy, close it, no, and then I'm going to paste it right here and resize it again. Okay, now I got two of those finished today. I can go back tomorrow or whenever I'm ready and I can finish up the third one. I'll copy and paste it and put it in here to reserve it. And then I can type my name up here. And then you have that preserved and the kids can share all of their creations in one slide deck. And they can comment and tell each other what a great job they did. Or even just add to maybe what would be the next cell that they would create for their story. Where would the story go? And give them certain suggestions and that would be fantastic. So that is how you can use Storyboard that. And I just did a Halloween scene. There's so much more you can do with this. And I encourage you to get into the storyboard.com website and check out some of their other examples. I hope you enjoyed seeing storyboard.com. And I can't wait to see what you all create.